Hey everybody, today I've got a BB-51C Joliet to take a look at, and this is the third release of the Canine Combiner Team. For this review, I'm going to do a quick rundown on the package. I'll transform this guy from cube to canine mode, talk about figure details, then I'll do a transformation demo into the combiner leg mode, and I'll wrap it up with a box grade and some final thoughts. So we'll just set this aside for a second here. The box art is, is always really nice. The front always features a cutaway of the cybernetic internals of the robot, and in this particular case, it's absolutely terrifying. I mean, this looks like a hellhound, to be honest. You've got the Beast Faction symbol here. Produced by 5-2 Toys, of course. Mechanical design by their in-house geniuses X2R. And engineering design from Alex Kubalski, who I believe is a fairly well-known product designer. Starting off, it's a nice-looking box mode. The mechanical components of a folded-up quadruped are well-represented and really visually interesting. So with a figure like this where the limbs are essentially folded up on the sides, these transformations are usually quite a bit simpler, and you're pretty much just separating parts out. So first step, we're going to just apply a bit of pressure to release the paws from the pegs on the opposing limbs, and you can probably already see where this is going. Next step, we're going to go ahead and flip the torso up and over, like so. We can just clear the head up and out of the way, flip it up and over, like so. Next, we'll remove the weapon pods. These are kind of cool looking. I'm not a huge fan of tiny add-on parts, but in this case, you do have weapon storage in its box mode. So at least you're able to keep these with the figure at all times and avoid potentially losing them. The articulated back-mounted cannon rotates up and out. Here's something I want to point out. Something I found out immediately about this figure is it's got this huge ball socket for the forelimbs, and the damn thing keeps popping off. It's easy to reattach, of course, but if you look at it closely, it's almost like a ball and cup mechanism, and it doesn't really snap into place. On the whole, this figure does feel solid, and its joints feel substantial, but these forelimbs pop off a little too easily, and that's worth pointing out. Now you pull up the torso, like so. We'll bring the waist up and over, like so, and you'll have it in this position. Essentially, these little handlebar pieces on the back are going to be oriented vertically. Release the paws from the forelimb, and for the forelimb, you're going to fold that forward, and then rotate it down. So the circular part of the elbow is completely exposed. Same on the other side. For the hind limb, same as before, you just release the paw, pivot at the hock, and then you straighten the leg out and bring it down. One interesting thing about these legs is they're designed to compact into a shorter limb, which will come into play with Joliet's counterpart called Claude, who I believe is a pit bull. That breed has a shorter stance, so it's a pretty cool thing when you have the same basic frame that's built to accommodate a couple of different breeds that are different sizes. These hind quarter pieces can tuck in if you want to kind of cover that up in the back and clean it up a little bit. So the tailpiece is a little bit of artistic license with this novel fork design. Is it a plasma-powered magnet? A tuning fork? A laser gun? A booty shocker? Who knows? It's up to your imagination. Last step, before I forget, you probably want to bring the paws down directly below each limb and give this guy maximum height. Like I said, this is number three of the canine bunch, and here's the lineup so far. These guys look great together. Let's talk about some figure details. This is maybe a St. Bernard because it does have this rounded piece that sort of resembles a thermos. You've got this sort of targeting lens and a sculpted eye. Whisker indentations on these nicely sculpted jowls. The jaw opens up to reveal some very menacing, realistic looking canine choppers. For graphic applications, you've got a sensor unit here. Danger. Hypermotor. J for Joliet. The land animal insignia. Hypermotor once again. Caution on the hind leg. More caution on the back. Cooling system, really nice. I love this checkered flag graphic detail. Overall, these are tastefully designed and uh, very well appointed. I want to revisit something I talked about in my boner review, which has to do with white paint applications on dark surfaces. So when it comes to white paint, it has to be applied twice so it doesn't appear transparent since ink is by nature absorbent and not reflective. When it comes to finely detailed graphics, the print alignment has to be really precise to keep it from smudging Point being, 5T Toys Manufacturing Partner is doing some high-quality precision work on these pieces, and I think that definitely deserves some attention. So yeah, you got awesome sculpting detail on the ears. I love how they made these cutaway elements, which really gives it kind of a cyberpunk look. This dog's beefy frame, thick limbs, and huge paws gives it a very imposing stance. Along with these weapons accoutrements and that awesome promo art of Joliet, this dog is 100% a war machine, and I'm really digging it. So moving on, Joliet has quite a bit of articulation. The head can tilt all the way up and down. Again, a movable jaw inside those cool looking jowls. The limbs are articulated exactly like a dog's, which affords you a very dynamic range of poses. You can get this fellow into an attack stance with almost no effort at all. 
I want to talk about this canine set's naming convention for a bit. You've got Romeo and Joliet, and then there's Boney and Claude, which is obviously playing famous male and female counterparts. However, all four of these dogs are very clearly intended to be males. I get the joke, and while I love 5-2 Toy's sense of humor, there's definitely a disconnect between the dog's naming convention and their character bios. So in this case, I feel like they should have picked a lane, you know? Save the jokes for jokey characters. Moving on, we'll transform this guy into its combiner mode. The first thing you want to do is slide its head into its neck. One thing I gotta point out here is the instructions say there's supposed to be a snap. I don't feel a snap when I do that, but I'm able to get it transformed correctly, so hopefully I'm not doing something wrong here. We're going to take the torso and rotate that forward at about this angle. At this point, you can take out the thermostat center chest and rotate it down like so. This back piece needs to come out like so. So you're going to fold that up like that, and the head will consequently fold down. With the head in this position, you're going to tuck that inside the chest cavity. The upper back piece is going to need to rest in this position, so the flat part is going to be situated at a 45 degree angle to the axis of the handlebars, and in a straight line with the back of the head. The back mounted articulated cannon rotates up and around, and then you fold that up at a 45 degree angle to the flat part of the upper back. Now we'll go ahead and flip the forelimbs around. Rotate the paws around 180 degrees on both sides. You're going to fold these paws up and over and, whoop, here we go. Another ball joint pops out way too easy. Not to worry, it reattaches easily so we can get back to business. What they'll do is they'll lock into this peg. There's actually going to be a gap between the forelimb and the shoulder piece, and this entire piece essentially forms a triangle. We'll do that on the opposite side, and again, you're forming a triangle shape. For the head, this chest piece just hinges down over the nose. One thing I'm not really fond of this character's combiner transformation is the head is completely exposed on the heel of the foot. So this isn't part of the instructions, but one thing I've found that seems to work really well is to rotate these ears up. They line up nicely with the chest piece and hold in place pretty well with friction, and that seems to conceal the head a little bit better. Obviously, the last character in the set, Claude, has a different head sculpt with smaller ears, so you won't be able to hide the head in the same way. These pegs hidden inside the hind legs are a pretty nice touch. They're easy to expose, you just open up these flaps, rotate the connection port out, and then fold the flap back down. As with Romeo and Boney, Joliet and Claude are completely interchangeable for either side. For the sake of demonstration, I'll open it up on both sides. Now the hind legs are going to come together to form the upper part of the leg. These two pore holes will plug into the opposite leg to form a solid connection. The interior part of that joint is on a ball joint, and that's going to come up and around like so. Same on the opposite side. Then they're going to push together in the middle. These paws have grooves, and they'll fold up and then down into that groove. These pieces need to fold back, and then with these two pieces together, you'll collapse them into the upper part of the leg, then pivot this assembly down to form the thigh. And finally, the tail folds up, and this is one of the legs of Massive Attacka. One quick thing I want to point out is there are these 3mm portholes all over the figure, so you've got a lot of flexibility to attach the weapon pods anywhere you want. Now it's time to give this dog a box grade. This is my rating system of 5 points possible in 6 categories for a total score of anything between 0 and 30 points. The canines are not only a high level of design with real-world influences from pop culture and machine parts, each individual figure has been given its own unique identity. And for that, Joliet is definitely not lacking. 5 out of 5. Tons of poseability and weapon accessories check all the boxes for the action figure crab. 5 out of 5. Transformation is pretty straightforward and almost can be done without instructions, and all modes look great. Though I think they could have done more to disguise the head in its leg mode. 4 out of 5. Articulation is excellent, although it's not quite as good as the Romeo and Boney molds, mostly due to its stocky frame. Posing this figure is very easy and absolutely emulates the mobility of a real-life dog. 5 out of 5. Construction is really good with solid joints and high-quality plastic and highly detailed graphic applications. There are a couple of ball joints that pop off a little too easily, which is annoying, but I wouldn't describe it as poor quality. 4 out of 5. Joliet is a very thoughtful study on animal anatomy and a unique take on a robot dog as an action figure. As with Romeo and Boney, it's a deceptively simple design with a ton of configurability. 5 out of 5. That brings the box grade total to 28 out of 30. So this is the third consecutive excellent release of this set, and it pretty much confirms 5-2 Toys' deft ability to produce figures that are not only designed to combine into a larger robot, but also have their own unique style. While those of us who have been collecting robot action figures for years have been conditioned to expect that combiners never really feel complete without the whole set, these dogs are so well designed that even if you don't buy all four, you'll never feel like something is missing. Although you probably should. Personally, I'm looking forward to getting Claude and combining these fellas into Massive Attacker. Of course, this is just one guy's opinion. 
I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, I'd appreciate a like, comment, or subscribe to help validate the time I put into producing these reviews. I look forward to talking with you again, and in the meantime, have yourself a great day. Thanks for watching.